Hi, everyone. Again, I hope you are all doing well and safe and happy. In this uh, video, I want to go over testing the difference of two population mean. In the last video, we did the testing the difference of two population proportions. Now we're going to do the means. Now, the main uh, steps here, again, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over the requirements. Then we're going to go over the steps of how to set up the claim, the critical values, test statistics, and of course, at the end, how to calculate all those and the conclusion. So let's start. The requirements, both samples are independent. So we talked about independent samples. Again, one sample has nothing to do with the another one. You just pick the samples from different places. And in the next videos, I will talk more about dependent samples or match pairs. But uh, these are just probably one sample when they're dependent. But these two samples are completely different, independent. Both samples are simple random samples or SRS. The population of both samples are normally distributed or the sample sizes N1 is greater than or equal to 30 or N2 again is at least 30. The sample sizes are no more than 5% of their population. Usually these requirements are satisfied in the problems that you're going to see. You might get a different problem, one problem just to check the requirements. But if the problem is about testing, they're assumed to be satisfied. And we will see examples of that. Steps, just like before, you have to write the claim, the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. We, you can have three cases here. One where mu1 is not equal to mu2. And you know you're dealing with a two-tail test. Next one, mu1 is greater than mu2. This is a right tail test. And mu1 is less than mu2, and that's a left tail test. And always for HO, we put mu1 equals to mu2. Critical values, there are three cases for this. If sigma1 and sigma2 are known, which is very rare, the critical values are z values, so it's a z test. If you want to find by using your calculator the critical values, then you do inverse norm. Of course, the area to the left, 0, 1. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 are known, then just for this, we have two different cases. One case is assumed that sigma 1 equals to sigma 2, or we say population standard deviations are equal. Note. This happens when both samples are drawn from the same population. If you draw the sample from the same population, so you assume that the population standard deviations are equal. The critical value or values in this case are T values. So to find them, you use inverse T area and degrees of freedom. What are the degrees of freedom is N1 plus N2 minus 2 or you can use this formula, which again, it's rarely used to find the degrees of freedom. The calculator might do that. And I just put the note here, just use that one and that's good enough. Case two or case B, if sigma one is not equal to sigma two, that means population standard deviations are not the same. This is the most common one. And just remember, if the problem does not mention that they're equal, just know you're dealing with this case. So you assume they're not equal. Always, again, for this one, it's also a t-test. And if you use the calculator, you do use inverse t, and you put the area and degrees of freedom. In this case, one more time, if sigma 1 is not equal to sigma 2, the degrees of freedom are different. You 
pick the smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1. So the other one, remember, for the first case, which was n1 plus n2 minus 2. But for this one, it's smaller of n1 minus 1 or n2 minus 1. Test statistics, obviously, we're going to have three cases the same as the critical values. If sigma 1 and sigma 2 are known, it's a z test. So the formula for the test statistics is a z value. It's x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2 over square root of sigma 1 squared over n1 plus sigma 2 squared over n2. This is always 0. So sigma 1 minus sigma 2 equals to 0. It's assumed in HO as we write in HO sigma 1. Uh, I'm sorry, it's mu 1. Mu 1 minus mu 2 is always equal to 0 because in HO we assume that mu 1 equals to mu 2. With calculator, again, you can go to stat, highlight test, and go to number three, which is two sample Z test. If sigma one and sigma two are not known, just for that, we have two cases, just like the critical values. So you assume sigma one equals to sigma two. We know it's a T test, and that's the formula for the test statistics. This is always assumed to be zero. Mu one minus mu two is zero. It's assumed in HO. Be careful here. We have an S sub P. This is brand new and it's called pooled sample variance. That's how you calculate it. N one minus one times S squared plus N two minus one times S squared over N one minus one plus N two minus one. The degrees of freedom, again, that's a note we saw when we were doing the critical values, n1 plus n2 minus 2. <coughs> to do this with the calculator is much better and much faster. You go to stat test, scroll down to number four, two sample t-test again. Then you're going to see at some point the calculator is going to say pooled. If you're using the pooled, sample variance, then you say yes to pool or highlight yes for pool. Next, we said if the problem does not mention their equals, we assume that sigma 1 is not equal to sigma 2 and they're not given. This is the most common one. So the test statistics for that t equals to x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2, always 0 because it's assumed in HO over squared of S1 squared over N2 plus squared of S sub 2 squared over N2. And that was N2, I think I, N1, I said N2. Calculator, stat, test, scroll down to number four. Again, is sample, two sample t-test. However, here for pooled, you say no. So highlight no for pooled. Conclusion, same as before, if the test statistics falls in the shaded region or p-value is less than alpha, you say reject HO. Put a little example here. This is the piece, test statistics p-value is that little area and that's less than alpha, which is that area, so reject HO. If test statistics falls in the non-shaded region area or p-value is greater than alpha, which is right here, and p-value is that pink area which is greater that, than that the violet area, so you say fail to reject HO. And of course, last step you do the final conclusion, which is enough evidence to support the original claim or not enough evidence to support the original claim. Let's go over this example. Test indicated claim about means of two populations. Assume that the two samples are independent and they have been randomly selected. So again, the requirements are given here. And the problem does not mention if sigma 1 equals to sigma 2. So we assume they're not equal. 
let's see what the problem says. Two types of flares are tested for their burning times and sample results are given be below. So we have brand X and brand Y. And these are the uh, statistics, the sample statistics, uh, especially these two. Refer to the sample data to test the claim that the two per population have equal means and use alpha equals to 0.05 and that's the significance level. So let's see how we can do that. So what I did, I put the givens, but instead of putting X and Y, I just call them one and two because it's just easier to use the formula and the calculator. And one is 35, X bar one is 19.4 and S one is 1.4 and two is 40, X bar two is 15.1 and S two is 0.8, alpha equals to 0.05. The degrees of freedom, Again, since we assume sigma one is not equal to sigma one, you pick the smaller of n one minus one or n two minus one. In this case, it's going to be thirty five minus one, which is thirty four. The claim they have equal means, so you write mu one equals to mu two. That's in the problem, so that's your original claim, and we have the equal sign, so that's H O. So H1 is going to be mu1 is not equal to mu2. And that's the counter claim. Take a look at that sign. It's not equal to, so we know we are dealing with a two-tail test. First critical values, when it's two-tail, divide alpha by two always. So you get 0 0.025. And we're going to use inverse T because this is a T test. 0.025 degrees of freedom. I went over that is 34. You get negative 2.03. So on the left side, you write negative 2.03. And on the right side, you write positive 2.03. Test statistics. So you're going to use this formula. X bar 1 minus X bar 2 minus mu 1 minus mu 2. And again, that's 0 over S1 squared over N1 plus S2 squared over N2. If you substitute all the numbers, this was, they were given in the problem. So if you do that, you get 16.025. So I will go over the conclusion and I put the calculator commands here, but I do want to do that by using the calculator. So you see clearly how that works. So let's go ahead and bring up the calculator. So again, we go to stat, then you go to test, scroll down to number four, which is two sample T test. Enter that. We pick stats because that's given to us. X bar one, I already have it for you, is 19.4. Then we have S sub X one, which is S one. That's 1.4. N one was 35. X bar two is 15.1. S sub X two is 0.8. And N two, or the sample size two is 40. So this is, our H1 that says not equal to, and here it's important, pooled. This is not pooled, so you say no to pooled. It's already there. And let me scroll down and calculate. Mu1 is not equal to mu2. H1 is the calculator gives you that. We have the test statistics, which is 16.025. Uh, and P, that little P is the P value 7.35 times 10 to the power of negative 22. That's very close to zero because the test statistics is a large number here. All right, let's go back and then go over the conclusion.
So the conclusion, I just have it here, close the claim and the drawing. The test statistics, we found that to be 16.025. So it's in the shaded region. First conclusion, we say reject HO. And again, this is the p-value, which is very small and much smaller than uh, alpha here. So reject HO. Once you make the first conclusion, you go to your claims, write reject next to HO because we rejected it and write accept next to H1 because if we reject HO, that means we accept H1. Then look for OC or the original claim. OC is right here. And next to that, it says reject. If I'm rejecting the original claim, that means we don't have enough evidence to support it. So you write not enough evidence to support the original claim. So we don't have enough evidence to support that the mean of these two types of flares is the same for the population. And uh, I think that's it for this video. Please watch this two, three, or four, five times, and you will be able to finish the homework on this. Thank you, and I will see you all very soon. Have a great day.